Now, now see, I thought the burn was what made him lose his arm. I didn't know about the cancer. It was expo explosion. So. Well, just for the record, I am John Kretnick. This is my cousin Lucy. Hi. And this is Uncle Leo, the son of Jacob and Mary Kretnick. Yeah, yeah. And hundred years old. You'll have to ask him questions. <laughs> and you are how old, sir? Mm -hmm. How old did you say you were? Hundred. A hundred years old. He's been with us for a full century. He's seen that's a lot. Right, that's right. <laughs> no, it's, I didn't know anything about the family except what my dad told me about mm -hmm. that. And I, and I know he got in that Kansas explosion. And okay. he got burned pretty bad. Okay, that was in a coal mine? In a coal mine. And, uh, I forget what number of mine there was in Frontenac, Kansas. And uh, he, he, at, at the start, I mean, what the, what this doctor did, he didn't know the doctors at that time, but this particular doctor put cotton on him first and then put the oil on him all over his whole body because that's what you're supposed to do. Right. I mean... Supposed to, but that was kind of backwards, huh? It's backwards, right. Should have had the oil okay, first so and then the cotton. When the next day when his do other doctors came in to check on him, they wanted to know who in the world did that. Mm -hmm. They said, that's wrong. So they had to get tweezers, pull all the cotton out, and put oil on him again, and then put the cotton back on. The right. Second time around. Then they found out it was a quack doctor. Mm. <laughs> And after he got, well, I, I, I don't know if it's should say or not, but after he got well, yeah, he, he, was, he was trying to find that doctor. He had a gun in his hand. And he's trying to find that doctor. He'll get, hmm. he's going to shoot him. But he never did. Never, never did find him. And that's a good thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. That's a good thing. Yeah, otherwise he'd have been arrested. Yeah. But anyway. So they came... Then, then it came down to, well, uh, we kind of split up and, uh... Did they come to this country together? Or did they who? meet your mom and dad? No, no, did no. Did they meet after they got here? Well, in Frontenac is where he had a, a friend of his from Slovenia. Right. And so he, he, he got there first and stayed there. And they took care of him. And I don't know how long it was that he called my mother. Okay. And that's that's where they got married, Frontenac, Kansas. Okay. But real, it real, took her 19 days to get here on a boat. Real quickly, you told me one time what the, cornet, what the correct pronunciation of the family name is. Our Kretnik? Yeah. Just Kretnik, yeah. Yeah, but you told me what, what oh, the, the well, European in, pronunciation. In, in, in Yugoslavia, the C, the C has a little curly Q above it. Right. And that is a CH. Okay. So. And the T is a D in Yugoslavia. So the name is Shrednik. Shrednik. S, yeah, C H R E D N I K. Okay. I mean, that's, that's what the difference was. In the name, right. I remember you telling me that one time, and yeah. I was wanted to make sure I had it right. You still remember that? I remember that. God, I remember that. <laughs> I remember they, they got married in Frontenac, and then, uh, well, I see. We went to Missouri. I was born in Minden, Mines, Missouri, in 1914. And uh, Johnny and, and let's see, I got Johnny is born. Uh, I mean, Tony was born. Sixteen. Menden Mines too, and I think uh, Mary was, wasn't it? Mary all three, was next. All three of us born Menden. Menden. And then my dad went to Kansas. He worked in Kansas coal mine okay. over there. Mine number seven, Breezy Hill, Kansas. 
then it, uh, he got a leg broken in that coal mine in Kansas, and he was not going to sue the company because he figured he'd lose his job. Right. So some lawyer picked it up and and sued the company regardless. Okay. So my dad got, I don't know, he got a couple hundred dollars, I think. Okay, then he was blacklisted, which is uh, this operator of this particular mine notified every, every coal mine right. in Kansas not to hire him. Right, so he was basically blackballed out, so of, out of the out. business. So then he went to Henrietta, Oklahoma, and he tried to work in a mine there, but they had, with the, the, the mine he worked in had a, water up up to his ankle mm -hmm. and he said he wasn't going to work but he worked that one day there and you can't and work he, those kind of conditions then he drifted to jenny lind and he met this fella but then that's he, jenny lind arkansas yeah uh, and he met met this fellow by the name of mike pike and this mike pike was was from the same town and was out in yugoslavia that, they were all together. Okay. Okay. And I'll tell you another one uh, was in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. But I'll tell you that later. But anyhow, this when we we moved uh, from Kansas down to Arkansas, 1929 September. September, I got I got malaria for a whole month, and I couldn't go to school, but. We would move down there. Then, then that's where we worked two coal mines down there. Okay. And uh, but this fellow, Jen Linda, was a, from the same town, the same area, and they were all buddies. Mm hmm And uh, in Cleveland, there was another one. There was a, all this. He was from the same town too. And and uh, my brother Tony. Went to Cleveland, right, to live with those people, and they, they, we wrote to them, and they said, "Yeah, tell them to come on up here." So, it went over there, but that's how they stayed in places mm -hmm. like that, you know. And uh, then, I, then I went to Chicago, okay. and I, the people I went to Chicago with was within the same area as my dad at okay. that time. They were all together. And they said I could stay there as long as I wanted to. Right. Well, I, I was up there and I, I, I didn't get a job right away. Like somebody told me, hurry up and get up here and get Campbell's mm -hmm. soup. Well, I didn't get a job for about two months, two and a half months. Mm -hmm. These people kept me. And this lady said, don't worry about it. I said, yeah, I have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll pay you later. And I, and then I had five dollars my name to my name, and and I got to thinking, well, let's shoot. I could go as far as five dollars would take me, and then I hitchhiked the rest of the way home. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, to my mind, I thought, what am I? What the heck am I going to do when I get home? I said, there's no jobs down there. Right. So, so then then that's when that's when. Uh, I helped my dad to farm and everything else. Mm -hmm. and then I, I uh, when I was 17, I went and went into coal mine with my dad. Okay. So I worked five years, and then I was went to Chicago. Now, what is this? What was the story that Dad told me that uh, uh, about Grandpa was? Uh, uh, Somehow or another, it bought into a um, uh, some kind of a store or something up in Kansas, and and was bootlegging alcohol or bootlegging beer or something. When did he have a bar? Didn't he have a bar? No, 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 no. That's uh, we uh, we 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 lived in Kansas at one time. Right. And I went to school in one in the school up there in Kansas, and I, this is 1936. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, uh, I was kind of new up there, and but I had a lot of friends up there mm -hmm. from from uh, school days and all that, and 
the boss that I, when I was going to work for ran a freight house. Okay. And he had two brothers, and they were going to work with him. And they had another couple guys. But anyway, uh, let's see what they going to say about it. Well, what did your dad, what was your dad doing up there at that time? My dad never was in Chicago. No, in Kansas. When did oh, he Kansas, have... Kansas, Kansas is cold. When did he have... He had something that he had a bar or was in a no, bar. No, that, that's that's a, a, that was in Missouri. It's a convenience store. Because that table and chairs that I've got came out of there. Came out of, Ken, out of that house, yeah. That came out of Missouri back in 1940. Was it the store he owned? That's a convenience store, yeah. And that table and chairs was in the convenience store. Yeah. Yeah, because Dad told me now. Now Dad told me that uh, that he was that uh, was they he was in partnership with somebody else over in, in a little town in Kansas and was actually bootlegging alcohol back and forth and was on the way someplace. I, I think into town to make a uh, uh, dep bank deposit and he was robbed and he couldn't report what he was going to deposit because it was got by because it was the alcohol he was that? selling was well, illegal. What that was my dad <clears throat> see my dad had a team of horses in the wagon right in Missouri okay and he delivered into Kansas too okay okay and he always went down, down certain roads you know right okay and he delivered goods maybe a few towns away, you know. Right. Okay, so this, this one time you're talking about, he went someplace to deliver something, and then on the way back, but he had to be sitting on the the top seat of, right. the, of the wagon, and but he couldn't see at night. This is nighttime, and there was a wire strung across a uh, road. Okay. Uh, tied to a pole in the tree, I think it was. I'm not sure how it was, right. but then when he got, he got there, he got him like that, and threw pulled, him back, and those him guys robbed wagon. him of all of his money. Mm. Yeah, that's that was that part. Yeah. Yeah, that. that so that so the, the yeah. store was actually in Missouri. And yeah. The business was actually in Missouri. Yeah, he, yeah, so he it, delivered. But it was in Kansas that it was robbed. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Dad didn't have all the. All those details, he could just remember bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, well, oh, well, Dad, Dad's a few, you know a few years younger than you, so you know well, that's going to make him a younger, a younger fellow. You know. Well, I'll tell you something else now. Okay. Uh, my dad whipped me when I was seven years old for smoking. Right. Okay. We we had a bunch of boys between seven and ten years of age, about six, seven of us. Right. And every night we would be sitting someplace and meet together, like we'd meet in the boxcar, we'd, we'd sit and talk. Yeah. But we had to be in, in the house but before dark. Right. The next night we might have been down to Ice House, sit on our parking lot down there. Or the next night we might be at the depot, mm -hmm. it was right close. I mean, things like that. But anyway, this one guy was, uh, we all was waiting for this fellow to come at, at a meeting that we, we had together. So here he comes later, he's the older one, and he he had found a pack of cigarettes that was, you know, somebody wrapped them up like that like yeah. and threw them away. Well, he picked it up. And then, then when he came over there, he unraveled it. It was a cigarette was in there. Yeah. Pete bought cigarette. I'll never forget that. And uh, so we all took a puff apiece. Yeah. And I took two puffs. I said, boy, that is good. <laughs> so next day, I stole a whole carton of cigarettes from my dad's and, and the store, the convenience store. Right. A box of nickel matches. Went under his rabbit hutches, which had to be uh, about a foot off the ground. 
and I was on one end, he was on the other end, and about seven rabbit hutches, which but the length of this room. Right. So I was down here, and I was smoking. He was down there coming coming out from the barn, and he saw smoke down there, and he thought something was on fire down here. Right. Okay, so he kept coming down here, and he, he, he saw my legs down there. He says, are you coming out? I said, no. So I I did go, did come out and I thought I thought to myself, boy, did I get rid of him? Well, about four or five minutes here he comes back. Right. And I'm still under there sm smoking. And he popped the horse whip under there. And the boy <laughs> was close to my body that I got scared. Yeah. So then that's when I started to hurry up to if I could get out down there someplace, I could get out of there and Beat him, you know. Right. Well, I, he, while he, while I was crawling, I was like this about this far. He was by him like that, so he could see me, but I didn't pay attention to where he was at. Uh huh. And he was just following me and gradually, just enough to catch me. Well, then, then when I stood up, that's when he popped me about three times with a horse whip. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smoke any more since for 93 years. There you go. <laughs> and, That'll learn you. And, and there's eight ch eight children under me, uh -huh. and not one of them smoked. This, they saw what happened they to you. They were scared. They, would get, they didn't know he was going to whip all the time, but anyhow, they were scared they would get a weapon. Yeah. And so they didn't smoke either. So... But after you, after you started coming around, <laughs> well, at, at, at one time you you worked you worked for the post office, didn't you? Had a what? Didn't you work for the post office? Post office, yeah, thirty one years. Okay, I thought I thought you did. Yeah, thirty one years. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, after we left. Uh, I mean, went to Chicago for thirty in nineteen thirty six. And I was up for five years, and then uh, in '42 they called us in the army so, or uh, military for three years. Then after that I came back down here and I and uh, they, they told me I, I had a job down here, so I worked about ten months. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go into draft, so I was drafted, and then. Uh, Went, I don't know how many, how many places I went, but it was all, all over the states. Mm -hmm. It was a limited service. Okay. People that had the bad eyes, bad ears, bad lungs, or bad arms. Right. They were in a separate deal. Right. Well, there's about 25 or 35 of us together. Mm -hmm. And they shifted us around different places. So, <laughs> Somebody pulled a trick the other that one time. We was all in, in a room, and there was a bunch of kids from school. Mm -hmm. You know, that wanted to hear some things that were going wrong. Well, and then, and then there was one guy with a peg leg over there. And when it was all over with, one kid says, "Well, tell me something. What's that guy with the darn peg leg? What does he do in, in the service?" He says, well, we peel the potatoes, and he mashes the potatoes for <laughs> <laughs> That was a joke to pull on. <laughs> so you, after you got out of the service, then, uh, how did you get into the post office? Well, see, that's, that's when I came back. Came back here. Uh, let's see. I, did you have to take the civil service test? No, I took that before I left. Before you went to where? Yeah, Chicago? Harlan and I both took it. But before no, you went to Chicago? Before you go to Chicago, yeah. Okay. I took that then. But to come back, they said I had a job here. So I, I worked 31 years at the same place the whole time. Okay. Six, six and Rogers. And you were? A window clerk. At that time, I was a window clerk, but they called it, uh, what did they call it? 
<laughs> it's a special word for it. But I was a 